Look, thank you, Ray, and certainly let me just say to Comcast, let me just extend my appreciation to Comcast for just being a terrific corporate partner uh, in the city of Houston. So look, if you'll join me, join me in thanking Comcast. And the reality is that what they're doing today is not, is not unique uh, to uh, their contribution to this city. Uh, I think I've been with them almost every year doing Comcast Cares uh, and uh, the contribution that they've made throughout our city and almost every community uh, speaks volumes. So let me, let me thank you all um, again for just consistently um, uh, stepping up and helping out. Um, I know uh, um, Mayor Nice Parker uh, is here and it's always good to see her again. And then to all of you, is that Cambrell Marshall over there? <laughs> I know I have made it now. <laughs> Gambrell, it's, it's good to see you. I tell you, are you narrating today? No. You're just sitting and eating. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well. <laughs> but no, look, let me, let me just start off. This has been an incredible, an incredible year. Uh, I think we can all say that. Um, I mean, we started off with the Super Bowl. What a fantastic an event, and Houstonians came together, people from the region, and, and they said that we put on um, the best, I believe the best Super Bowl in the 50 years of the Super Bowl history. Um, and then, of course, in the uh, end of August, well, let me back up, and then we hosted uh, the NCAA Final Four, and that was a terrific uh, finish, uh, just some simply uh, incredible. Uh, and then, of course, the end of August came, you know, Harvey, um, 51 inches of rain, 27 trillion gallons of water falling on our area, uh, the most rain and water uh, in any of the history of this country, quite frankly. So quite devastating. But uh, immediately after that, uh, the Astros stepped up. I'll never forget. Uh, <laughs> I'll never forget Jim Crane called and asked, uh, would it be insensitive for uh, the Astros to play, the, uh, to play their home game um, immediately after the storm? The storm you know, finished up around Tuesday, Wednesday, so to speak, and they were scheduled to play uh, uh, that weekend, Saturday, and um, you know, we indicated to them, look, you know, in the city of Houston, we play ball, let's play ball, um, because you, you, can't, you, know, you can't stay down forever. And so people need something to, um, uh, to applaud and um, take, their, take their minds off of things that were happening. They played, they won that double hitter. And then of course the rest is history. Boston, you know, out of the way, done. Uh, <laughs> you know, the New York Yankees, you know, arrogant as they are, done. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, LA Dodge, LA and and of course, to start off playing there, they are the first two games, and then they have to come back here, and, uh, and then to go back to LA. And what I told people, um, you know, 51 inches of rain fell on the city of Houston, and in the seventh game of the World Series, we end up winning 5-2-1, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just tell people, the stars align. <laughs> the stars align. Um, and so that happened. But, but, but let me tell you, the, uh, even though Harvey came our way, uh, I truly believe uh, that the city of Houston uh, was at its very, very best. Uh, people coming together, divisions were eliminated, uh, no one was asking if, if they found themselves in need, whether you were a Democrat or Republican or Independent, people were not asking whether you are conservative or uh, liberal. They were not asking for, any, for whether or not you had papers or you don't have papers, what language you spoke, what your religion. Quite frankly, when Houstonians found themselves in need uh, and you went close enough in vicinity to assist, that is, that's exactly what Houstonians did. Uh, first responders responded uh, exceptionally well. Uh, take my hat off to all of them. Uh, but neighbors helping neighbors, good Samaritans, uh, and then our faith-based community, nonprofits stepped up. 
uh, whether you were at one of the shelters, whether you were downtown at the George R. Brown, we had people stepping up and, and volunteering their help. And that was, I mean, that was just amazing. Um, of course, at the NRG, I know Anise Parker can speak to that because she was there every day attending to those individuals who were there. Again, nonprofits stepping up. Uh, in our communities, in our neighborhoods, a number of the nonprofits were functioning in those communities, uh, meeting the needs of people. Uh, and then even in this aftermath, uh, we've had organizations that's been in, our, in the neighborhoods. I know my daughter Ashley was working with millennials on weekends, working with the Urban League, uh, working with the people from the Department of Neighborhoods, going in and mucking and, and uh, gutting people's homes, especially senior citizens. And that's been happening all over the city, all over the region. And quite frankly, but for the help of nonprofits and others. Uh, the needs of, of Houstonians and people in our region simply could not be met. If you just had to leave it up to the city of Houston, we could not meet those needs. But with the help of nonprofits and so many others, uh, we've been meeting the needs of people within our city, and we continue to meet those needs because those needs are there. I tell people the water is gone, but the damage has already is inside people's homes. And so when people are coming to our city, and there were uh, several people who came a few weeks ago, and they were saying, drive us around, let's, you know, let's see, them. we want to see the debris and the damage. And uh, they just knew the city would just tow up. Uh, well, as they drove around, they didn't, they didn't see the debris. And so for, for them, you know, it's like the city had turned the corner and we were moving on down the road. The reality is, is that the damage is literally inside people's homes. And uh, just as a reminder, I was watching um, uh, Fox News last night. Um, <laughs> I told you the storm el eliminated divisions now, you know. So uh, this was in between. I was, I was watching the Texans, and I switched over for the news. And I was watching Fox News. And Randy Wallace was doing this story on this 98-year-old woman. Uh, Naomi Williams, who lives in the Kashmir Gardens area, uh, and she was in a home that was flooded, uh, and literally uh, she was denied any help from FEMA because her home had previously flooded, and she didn't have flood insurance, and they turned her down. And she, was, uh, she has been living on a sofa in her living room, and that's it. And, uh, uh, but she was in good spirits, 98 years old. Uh, the only thing what she was wanting is that she wanted her house to be put back in a livable state. And, uh, and one of her church members was assisting her. Um, and so, you know, it was another reminder, you know, that there are tremendous needs that exist. Um, I ended up calling on some people this morning to, to assist her. Uh, to, to repair, get a home remediated and repaired. And for her, she doesn't want to be moved out, okay? She was not looking to go to a hotel, okay? She wasn't looking to go someplace else. 98 years old, and if you know seniors. <laughs> you, can, you can go fix up one side of the house and that's and she gonna be on the other side, but she's not leaving her home. And and like I was telling them, they said, "Well, Mayor, you know, we can go put her in a hotel." I said, "I'm telling you, she's not going to no hotel." <laughs> but for her, just the fact that people showed up and were there to assist just lit up. Her, it made all the difference in the world. So let me just let me just close by let me thank you for what you do, uh, the nonprofits that exist, the needs that you are meeting. And there are so many stories that most of the stories people will never hear. Most of the stories will never, Cambrell will never cover. Um, and, and <laughs> Y'all feel me, you know what I meant. No, no matter how hard he tries, most of the stories 
will not be covered. Just can't do it. But you are seeing them each and every day. And you're meeting the needs of people where, where they are. And for that, uh, I certainly, I want to say thank you. Um, because you're making an incredible difference. And you're putting smiles back on people's faces. And you're helping to rebuild their lives one moment, one hand, one step at a time. And I want to thank you for it. And it does demonstrate the character of our city. It does describe who we are. And it does indicate how resilient we are. And it does reflect that we are Houston strong. And we are Houston strong because we are a city that cares. Regardless of who you are, regardless of where you come from, irrespective of the politics, in this city, we are a very caring city. And when we are faced with challenges, we find a way to come together to make it happen. And that's how we've always operated in this city. If no other help comes from D.C. or from the state, this city will find a way to rise to the occasion to meet people's needs. And we do it very, very well. And so, again, to Comcast, thank you uh, for just being an excellent, outstanding corporate citizen. To the nonprofits, thank you for, for caring and thank you for what you are doing. And not just for this storm, prior to and what you will be doing down the road. Because uh, quite frankly, because of you, this city will continue to be a city on the move. So thank you so very much.